Hello everybody, and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob. With me, Rob Biddle. There I am. Now then, it's a very special episode today. You ready for this? Oh, look at that. My daughter, Kitty, told me that I had to paint my fingernails <laughs> Halloween-y colours. Well, actually, I didn't do it. She did it for me. She did it quite quickly. As you can see, it's slightly scruffy in places, but she's done a very good job, I think. And it's because today is Halloween. Spooky episode today. Now then, I should probably introduce myself to those that don't know me. They just think I'm a strange man with orange and black fingernails. My name is Rob, Rob Bidolf. I'm a children's author and illustrator. You might have seen some of my books. Like this one, Show and Tell, all about a class full of children. Bring crazy things in to show and tell at school to show their friends. Maybe you've seen this one, which is actually my brand new book. It's cool. Oh, just dropped a book on the floor there. This is my brand new book. It's called Dog Gone. Now then, there's actually quite a spooky scene in this book here. It's all about a pug called Teddy who loses his human. Here's his human. His name's Dave. One day he takes Dave out for a walk, because that's how it works. You see, dogs take their humans out for walks. Everybody knows that. We all, we all kid ourselves thinking we take our dogs out for walks, but actually it's the dogs that take us out for walks. One day, he takes Dave out for a walk, and look, they see a spooky, terrible troll in a shed. Look, it's a very spooky story, and lots of spooky things happening, especially when Dave gets lost. So Teddy here loses Dave, who's his human, he gets lost and look, he has to go and look for him <gasps> in the terrible troll shed. And look, <gasps> the troll's in there when Teddy finds the troll and gets chased by the troll and the troll traps him. Oh, it's very scary indeed. But I'm not going to tell you what happens in that story. If you want to know what happens, you're going to have to look at the book, aren't you? Find the book in the library or in the shops and have a read, right? Oh, look, I keep looking at my fingernails. Isn't it weird? Isn't it strange? having orange and black fingernails. Right, we're here to do a drawing today, a bit of a spooky drawing for Halloween. I thought it would be rude not to do something a bit spooky. So I thought, what's the scariest thing I can think of? I know, a self-portrait, okay? But some of you might remember that we did a self-portrait way back in April. I think it was video number nine back in April. We actually, I showed you how to draw a little self-portrait, but you know what? I thought we would do another one. The only difference between this one and the one that we did back in April is we're not going to have any skin on our bodies in today's self-portrait. That's right, we are drawing a spooky skeleton. <sighs> I'm not sure why skeletons are spooky actually, but they are. Skeletons are very synonymous with Halloween. So listen, this is what you're gonna need, a piece of paper. You're gonna need a pen or a pencil, something to draw with. You might need something to color with a bit later, but it's not gonna be a very colorful on this one. It's just gonna be black and white, I think, my one. Maybe a little bit of color here and there. But we are going to draw a very simplified version of a skeleton, especially for Halloween. Right, so this is how it works. You are gonna watch me draw a small bit of the drawing on my piece of paper here. Then you can pause your video and you can copy exactly what I do. Start the video up again, I will draw a bit more. Pause it, you draw. Start it again, I draw. Pause it, you draw. I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, I 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 draw, I'm, I'm being a bit crazy today, I'm so sorry about this. I think it's something to do with the fingernails. Um, so I draw, you draw, I draw, you draw, and we're gonna end up with a lovely drawing of a skeleton. Okay, so let's start, shall we? We are going to start towards the top of our page, maybe sort of two thirds of the way up. I want you to start with a very simple horizontal line, about a centimeter long, maybe slightly longer. A nice, easy start to our Halloween skeleton. Right, then we're gonna go up on that side a little bit. And we're going to go up on that side a little bit. And then what we're going to do, we are going to draw a big circle, sort of oval shape. Goes around from that left-hand line we drew, all the way around, back around here, and we're gonna join up with the other side. And there we go. Guess which part of the skeleton that is? That's right, it's the skull. 
we are starting with the head. We are starting with your skull. Okay, the next thing to do is sort of here, just above where this corner is here, I want you to draw a smallish circle like that. And we're just going to colour that in black. And that's going to be one of our skeleton's eye sockets. Let's do exactly the same over here, shall we? Nice and easy. Okay. It's starting to look like a skeleton already, isn't it? Then in between those two eyes, let's just draw. Now this is a funny shape here. We're going to draw. It's a bit like a sort of, it's a bit like an, I don't know, like a, like a kidney bean or something on its side, or sort of like an up arrow, but with curved ends. And that's going to be our little skeletal nose socket. I like him. He looks like a friendly sort of skeleton, this chap. I say him because I think this is my skeleton. I'm basing it on my skeleton, but you can base yours on yours. <laughs> your drawing on your skeleton, if you see what I mean. Right then, next thing to do, right in the middle of this sort of sticking out bit down the bottom, I want you to draw, well actually towards the top, I just want you to do a line across, maybe slightly curving upwards if you want your skeleton to be smiley skeleton. And then I want you to just draw a series of vertical lines along that horizontal line. And there we go. There is our skeleton's smile. Okay, now we're going to get into the nitty gritty of it. We're going to draw our skeleton's bony body. So let's start, shall we, by drawing a long, thin rectangle coming straight down from the middle of our skeleton's skull, like that. And then on the end of that, I want you to draw four or five sort of little circly bits. Let's just do four, I think. And that's going to form the basis of our skeleton's spine. Okay. The next thing to do, there's lots of bones in a skeleton, isn't there? Do you know how many bones there are in the human body? Well, should I tell you a very, very interesting fact about the skeleton? We are actually all born with 300 bones in our body. But you know what? By the time we're adults, so you might still have 300, maybe 290, 280 even, 250 maybe. Because do you know what? By the time you get to be a grown-up like me, we've only got 206 bones. So we start with 300, we end up with 206. And now that's not because they just fall out all over the place. You're walking down to, you know, supermarket and a couple of bones fall on the floor out of your trouser leg. That doesn't happen. It's because the bones kind of fuse together. They join together, you see. So we start off with 300, end up with 206. Bit of education for you there. Never let it be said that I don't teach you something during these lessons. Right, so let's draw one of these bones here, shall we? Coming, it's going to be, this is going to be sort of the shoulder, the clavicle, the sort of the collarbone. We are going to draw slightly down at a diagonal, a shape like that, a sort of sausage shape. And we are going to do one exactly the same, but the mirror image on the other side, like that. Okay. Then, underneath that, I want you to draw a curved line that comes out of the spine, curves up and joins up with that shoulder blade thing, bone thing. Now, if any of you are keen kind of stud students of medicine, you might notice that my drawing here is not going to be technically very accurate, okay? I am simplifying this skeleton pretty massively because as I said there's 206 bones in the adult skeleton and you know what if I was to show you how to draw all of them it we would be sitting here from now till Christmas so I thought I'm simplifying it's kind of a cartoon skeleton so we are just going to simplify it a bit so this is the first of our ribs here so I want you to then draw another curve shape following that original one around like that then underneath that we're going to draw another one that joins up to that shape there we go, there is our second rib. And then we're gonna draw a third one. It's a bit smaller, they may be getting a little bit smaller each time. Like that. So we that is the left-hand side of our skeleton's rib cage. 
Obviously, we need to do exactly the same on the other side now. So I want you to try and do a mirror image of what you've just drawn. We're gonna try and keep it nice and symmetrical. Don't worry too much if it's not perfectly symmetrical. I think that makes the drawings even more charming. I keep saying that, don't I? Little mistakes, little imperfections, they're what gives your drawing its individuality and its charm. So don't worry if yours isn't perfect. Okay, now what I want you to do is at the end of this shoulder, blade this sort of I don't know if it's not really the shoulder blade is it sort of the collarbone I broke my collarbone once playing football I, f I was running along with the ball somebody kicked me and tripped me up and I went flying up in the air landed on my collarbone crack oh I am telling you it hurt it hurt a lot so much I couldn't move me off the pitch they had to drive the ambulance onto the football pitch <laughs> to pick me up because I couldn't move oh that was painful I had my arm in a sling for a long time anyway enough about me and my skeleton here we go on the end of this this collarbone here, I want you to draw just a sort of a little circle sitting behind the, the collarbone and that top rib. Again, we're going to do exactly the same on this side. And then coming out of that circle, I want you to draw two quite short diagonal lines like that. Let's do the same over here. Let's just keep doing both sides as we go. So two diagonal lines going the other way out of that. Then on the end of that, I want you to draw another little circle. Again, this is part of our simplified skeleton. This is going to be our elbow joint. Then we're going to draw a diagonal line, two diagonal lines going up and to the left on that side, up and to the right on that side. And then we're going to do two slightly bigger circles at the end of each arm, like that. I like it, it's coming together nicely, isn't it? Now then, this is gonna be like the kind of the palm of our skeleton's hands, these two bits here. So we now need to add the fingers. And did you know there are more bones in your hands and your feet? Um, more than half of all the bones in your body are found in your hand and your feet. There's loads and loads of little tiny, tiny bones in your hands and feet. So we are going to draw, first of all, let's draw each finger like we would a normal hand when we've done other drawings of hands before. We're just gonna add quite short little shapes. One for a thumb, two, three, four, five. Like that, let's do that on each hand. One for a thumb, slightly bigger. Two, three, four, five. But because this is a skeleton drawing, we want it to look like a skeleton. What we're going to do is we're gonna add a tiny, another tiny little shape just to the end of each of those fingers, like that. And if you want, you can make them bend slightly as your fingers bend. And then we're not gonna finish there, we're gonna add an even smaller one to each of the tips of each finger and each thumb, like that. And it's a very simple way of creating the sense of lots and lots of bones in the hands. It makes it look a bit skeleton-y and spooky, doesn't it? There we go. Our skeleton has two arms. Now we're gonna go down here. So this is the spine, this area here, and we're gonna go into the pelvis, which is the bone that sort of joins the spine, the top half of your body, to the bottom half of your body. And this is how we do that. We're gonna draw, it's sort of a bit like a bow tie shape. That sounds a bit strange, doesn't it? But it really is a bit like a sort of fat bow tie shape. I want you to draw that at the bottom of the spine. And then we're just gonna do two other circles, one there and one there, because pelvis, the pelvis sort of has these holes, has these sort of holes in it. Yeah, I've only drawn six ribs. You know, actually in real life, we have 12 ribs. Actually, I think there's six on each side. Some people, do you know what? Some people have an extra rib. They have 13 ribs. That's true, spare rib, so to speak. <laughs> I'm full of interesting skeleton facts today, aren't I? Right, let's get on to our skeleton legs. We're gonna start coming from the bottom right-hand side of our pelvis. We're gonna draw a diagonal line like that and another one next to it. These are gonna be slightly further apart than the arms because the leg bones are slightly thicker than the arm bones. In fact, you know what? The biggest bone in your entire body is your thigh bone, which is called your femur. That's the biggest bone in your whole body. Do you know where the smallest bone in your body is? Anybody know? I'm listening. That's a clue. That is a clue. That's right. 
smallest bone in your body is called, I think it's called something like the stapes. Stapes, stapes, is that right? Stapes? I'll put it up here. I think it's the stapes and it's found in your ear. There's loads and loads of tiny, tiny, tiny bones in your ear. Very clever thing, the ear, to make us hear, isn't it? Okay, where was I? Right, now this time I'm gonna draw the whole of this, his, his left leg, so the right leg as we look at it. I'm gonna draw the whole of the right leg before we get onto the other one, because I want them to look slightly different this time. So what we're gonna do, at the bottom of those two lines, I want you to draw another one of our little circles, which is gonna be our knee joint. Then we're gonna draw a couple more lines coming down from that knee joint at a slight angle. You can do your skeleton in any pose you like. Mine's gonna have a slightly bent leg like that. And then, at the bottom of that, I want you to draw the foot. And the foot, we're gonna start with a sort of, it's a bit, it's sort of like rounded at one end and flat at the other end. So like a funny old rectangle shape, like that. And then we're gonna draw the toes. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five. And again, I'm just gonna add a little extra shape on the end of each toe, just to suggest that it's a bony thing. And then the other leg, I'm gonna do our skeleton dancing. So I'm gonna do the other leg sticking out a bit from the side of the pelvis. So similar length to that, but a slightly different angle. Then we'll add our knee joint here. Then the other leg, I'm gonna do come, the other, the sort of the shin bone, I'm gonna do coming in like that. So it looks a bit like our skeleton is dancing. Let's finish that end off like that. Then we're gonna add the other foot there, like that. Big toe, two, three, four, five. Little bits on the end of each one. And there we go, our dancing skeleton. Now I'm gonna add, this is a little trick, if you wanna make it look like your character is sort of jigging about, just add a few little movement lines here and there around your little skeleton, just like that. Spread them around a bit. Maybe, maybe even put one up there, and look, our skeleton is dancing a little bony jig to celebrate Halloween. You know what? Let's make our skeleton say Happy Halloween to us, shall we? So first thing to do, remember we're, we're going to put this Happy Halloween in a voice bubble, but do you remember I've told you this before, if ever you do a voice bubble, what you need to do is you need to write whatever you want to go in the voice bubble before you draw the actual voice bubble itself. That way you won't make your voice bubble too small for the writing. So I'm gonna write, Happy Halloween. I've gotta make sure I spell this right now, I feel the pressure. Halloween. I'm never sure with Halloween if you meant to put, come on, let's curl I meant to put a little apostrophe between the two E's. So I think it comes from All Hallows Eve, which is All Hallows Evening. Some people put a little apostrophe there, but I'm not gonna do that. It's probably very old fashioned to do that. I'm gonna put a little exclamation mark though. And then, when we do the voice bubble, first thing I always do is the little bit that goes towards the mouth of whatever the creature is. And now I'm gonna do a little spiky one. I don't know why, it just feels appropriate on Halloween to have a spiky voice bubble. So lots of little zigzaggy lines going around. Our little happy Halloween. And there we go, that is our skeleton, a very simple skeleton drawing. Okay, it's time to color in now. Now, skeletons, usually they're pretty white, aren't they? But there's no reason that your skeleton can't be any color you like. You could even do each bone, each little bone a different color if you like, so it's a nice rainbow skeleton. It might make it a bit more jolly and a bit less scary, mightn't it? Although, my skeleton here is a very friendly one. He's, nothing, he's not to be scared of at all. I think I'm gonna leave mine white, but I might actually shade around my skeleton a bit with some black watercolor just to make the whites kind of stand out. So I am gonna disappear. I'm gonna go into super speed mode for this as per usual. I will see you back here in about 30 seconds. Okay, three, two, one, let's go.
we go, there's my finished Halloween skeleton. So you can see I've colored it in all black around the skeleton to make, make him stand out a little bit more. I've added a few little hints of color and a little bit of shading in here. Can you see all these little tiny bits I've added in pencil, little dots, a few little dots and circles and little kind of crack marks just to give the skeletal bone a little bit more kind of texture. So you can add little details like that. But I think it's a really fun one, this. It's not very scary, is it? It's not a very spooky Halloween skeleton, but it's a fun one to do. And another self-portrait. We draw another self-portrait. So that all that's left for you to do at the end is sign your picture. Where should I sign my? I'm going to sign it down here. Let's do my full name on this one. Rob. Dolph. There we go. Signed my little picture. Don't forget to sign your drawing so everybody knows who's created the beautiful Halloween work of art. Now then, I would like you to ask your grown-up to take a picture of your drawing and then you can post it using the hashtag, oh, where should I put it? Let's put it just up here. Draw with Rob. It's a bit small there, isn't it? But you can see it. And if you're doing this at school, why not um, get your teacher to take a picture of you holding up your drawings of skeletons and if you tag that with the hashtag cla Ooh, class of the week there, then I will get to see that and I'll choose which one's my favorite and you'll get a very special certificate saying that you are the Draw With World class of the week. Otherwise, yes, post your drawings using that Draw With the World hashtag and we'll see if yours makes the grid. I'll get to see them all. I hope you have a very happy Halloween and you have fun. It's gonna be a different one this year, isn't it? We're not allowed to go out trick, and tr trick or treating, but I'll tell you what, you could add this drawing of a skeleton. We did a pumpkin last week. Do you remember we did a pumpkin? Why don't you stick your skeleton and your pumpkin up in the window to celebrate Halloween? That might be fun, mightn't it? Um, but I hope you have a fun time. I hope you don't have nightmares and get too scared by the whole Halloween thing. It's only a bit of fun, isn't it? It's just a bit of spooky fun. I really like it. It's good fun, me and my kids like it. I would like to say a special thank you to my daughter Kitty for painting my nails and having the idea for, of me for me to paint my nails and doing such a well. Is it a good job? Let's be just be generous and say for doing such a good job. <laughs> she did it last night actually. I've had to had I've had to have this on all night and it was a bit dark I think so she sort of missed a few bits of my nail but I'm very grateful for her. It was a very good idea but I'm not quite looking forward to getting it off now. I must admit. Hope you have a happy Halloween. I'm going to be back very soon with another Draw With Rob video. In the meantime, take care of yourselves everyone and I'll see you soon. Bye. just when you thought you got rid of me. Here I am popping up again at the end of your video. I just wanted to very quickly tell you about this. It's the Draw With Rob at Christmas activity book. Lots of you have got the other activity book I know and there's more fun in this book here and it's all festive themed. So there's loads and loads of things for you to do. We've got an arty advent for you to start off with where there's something for you to do every single day. We've got blank Father Christmas letter pages. We've got Christmas deck, you make your own Christmas decorations, make your own Christmas cards, lots of coloring, lots of draw alongs. Look, here we go, snowman draw along. Loads and loads and loads of things to do. Look, you can even make your own little box for Christmas gifts. And I have got you covered when it comes to thank you cards too. Look, here, I'm gonna get there. Oh, look, I forgot, nearly forgot to tell you this. This is one of my favorite bits. Christmas cracker jokes. You can cut all of these out roll them up and put them around the table at Christmas time and all your family and friends who are with you, they can each tell a joke and it's got little charades and it's got, even got like little kind of guess the sketch ideas for you to draw along with each other over Christmas dinner. So listen, I think you're gonna like this. That's what I wanted to show you. Thank you cards, look mums and dads. Ready-made thank you card templates. No excuse not to write those thank you cards, is there? So listen, check it out. It's available wherever you get your books from. Online, in person, even better. If you can find it in a bookshop, even better. It's, how much does it cost? 6 99 not too expensive. Perfect stocking filler. Actually perfect, I would say, to give to somebody on the 1st of December so they can enjoy it all the way through the build up to Christmas. Anyway, I hope you like it. 
I'm going to see you soon for another Draw with Rob video. Take care, everyone.